My name's Gareth and I make videos helping people to get high scores in the IELTS test. In this video, we're going to look at some questions from part one of the IELTS speaking test. And we'll also have a look at some sample answers to these questions to show you what is an appropriate and good answer to give in this part of the test. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on any videos that are gonna help you to improve your IELTS score. So let's have a quick look at the four questions that we're looking at in this video. Now, the first one, at what age did you start studying mathematics? The second one, do you like mathematics? Third one, is it necessary for everyone to learn mathematics? And the last one, do you prefer to use a calculator when doing mathematics? Okay, I mean, you can see here that these questions are on a pretty random topic that might surprise you when you're in the test. The topic of mathematics, not something you would really expect to get asked about in the IELTS test. But they're just asking you these questions to kind of shock you a little bit and hear your natural spoken English to make sure you haven't just prepared any memorized answers um, when you're in the test. So you can also see, I mean, the first question, at what age did you start studying mathematics? This question is really focusing on the past. It's checking to see if you can speak well using the past tense to talk about when you were younger. Um, the topic here doesn't really matter too much, but of course you can show off some topic related vocabulary in your answer. The second question, do you like mathematics? Really common question here that's focused on the present tense. So slightly different to the first question. A do you like question is almost always asked in part one of the test. But here the topic is mathematics. The third question, is it necessary for everyone to learn mathematics? Well, a simple question that's saying, is it necessary for something? A common type of question that comes up in part one. And here the topic is learn mathematics. Again, really focused on the present tense. And then finally, we had the do you prefer question. Do you prefer to use a calculator when doing mathematics? And again, this is a common style of question. I mean, the topic is using a calculator when doing mathematics, but you might see this style of do you prefer to question in part one of the test very often. Anyway, let's have a look at the four answers to these four questions now. And then afterwards, I'll give you a quick analysis of why they're good answers. So the first question, at what age did you start studying mathematics? I can't exactly remember, but it was probably in my first year at primary school when I was five years old. I probably learned simple addition at that age. Do you like mathematics? I don't dislike maths, but I wouldn't say that I've ever really liked the subject either. I'm happy to do simple calculations, but my brain can't cope with the complex stuff. Is it necessary for everyone to learn mathematics? Yes, I think it is. We all need a basic grounding in maths so that we can do daily tasks like managing our money, working out bills and so on. Do you prefer to use a calculator when doing mathematics? It depends. I quite like exercising my brain with anything that's easy enough, but I use the calculator on my phone for anything tricky. So there we have it. Four nice clear answers to those simple part one questions. You'll notice that all of those answers had two sentences. This is generally my advice to students is to stick to just giving two sentence answers in part one. You don't really want to speak any longer than that just because the other two parts of the test, part two and part three, you're going to give longer, more detailed answers. Part one is a chance to show off your fluency and that you can give nice, quick, simple and clear answers. 
There were no errors in those answers, and we used some quite interesting vocabulary in some of the answers, but really nothing too complex. Let's just have a look at each of those answers in a bit more detail, and I'll highlight some of the keywords that I was using and phrases that might be useful to remember. So the first question, remember, was focused on the past. At what age did you start studying mathematics? And here was my answer. So I've started by saying I can't exactly remember. So we're not exactly sure, but we need to give an answer. So we're going to compare that with the word but. It was probably in my first year at primary school. Well, we're making sure we're using the past tense there. Was, not is. Uh, just making sure we're using the grammar from the question. And we're giving an age. The question is asking for age. So I say when I was five years old. Then I've given a bit more detail in the second sentence. I probably learned simple addition at that age. So I'm using the word addition there to describe what I learned in connection with mathematics, a bit of topic related vocabulary there. But again, nothing too complex. And then I stop my answer after two sentences. Right, let's move on to the, that second question, the do you like mathematics question. And here's the answer. I don't dislike maths. So I start by saying, well, I don't like it, but also I don't dislike it. And then comparing that. But I wouldn't say that I've ever really liked the subject either. So I'm kind of in the middle here, but I have focused on the question, do you like? Well, I don't dislike it, but I don't really like it either. Uh, you notice there I've actually used the present perfect tense. I've, I don't, I'm sorry, but I wouldn't say I've ever really liked the subject either. I've or I have ever really liked the subject. So from the past until now. Um, <clears throat> and then I've explained it a bit more in the second sentence. I'm happy to do simple calculations. So Really nice collocation there, simple meaning easy, and then together with the noun calculations. And then I've said, but my brain can't cope. Cope here, to cope with something means to be able to do it. But I said, well, I can't cope with the complex stuff. So the opposite of simple, complex, more difficult. There we go, a quite a simple answer, but again, two sentences focusing on that question, not going off topic. Third question was, is it necessary for everyone to learn mathematics? I've started off my answer here by saying, yes, I think it is. So a nice, clear and direct answer there, taking aside. And then in the second sentence, I just explain why. We all need a basic grounding in maths. Grounding here basically means knowledge, right? A basic knowledge, a simple knowledge in maths. And then why do we need that? So I've used the word so, so that we can do daily tasks. And then I've given some examples after that, like managing our money. Nice collocation there with the verb and the noun, managing money. Working out bills. So a nice phrasal verb there to work out something, to figure out something, to calculate something. That's basically what that means. But I used the word calculate in previous answers. So it shows a range of vocabulary there and so on. Um, so there we go. That's the two sentence answer there. Nice and clear, straight to the point. Right, then we moved to the fourth question, which was a do you prefer question. Do you prefer to use a calculator when doing mathematics? So if you look at the answer here, it's slightly different to the previous one. I've started with it depends. This can be quite difficult when we answer a question like this because you've got to explain maybe both options if we say it depends. But it can be a good thing to do if you've already said yes or no to some answers, then Doing this shows a bit of variety, but it's not easy to do. A lot of students find it difficult to keep focus after giving an answer like this, and their answers tend to be a bit too long. But it's definitely something to practice. If you look at the second sentence, I just explain both situations. I quite like exercising my brain with anything that's easy enough. So if it's easy, I will exercise my brain or use my brain. But then I compare that with the other option using the word but again, but I use the calculator on my phone for anything tricky. So we're comparing here with something easy. I don't use a calculator, but if anything's tricky, which means difficult, uh, I'll use the calculator on my phone. 
so there we have it. We've just gone through those four questions and looked at four really good answers to these part one questions. Remember, your answers don't need to be any longer than this. this these are good enough answers that a really high level student would give in part one of the IELTS speaking test. Hope this video was helpful for you. And if it was, then don't forget to give the video a like. And again, remember to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on any future videos on similar topics. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next video.